28 millimeters, but an f5.6 maximum aperture. The smallest lens I own. Is it worth it? This is the TT Artisan 28 millimeter f5.6, and these are my first impressions. So the biggest elephant in the room in terms of this lens in particular is that it seems like a direct copy of the Leica 28 millimeter Sumeron lens. They are both obviously styled the same way and you know, Leica has been making lenses like this for 50, 60 years or whatever. So unfortunately in those aspects, it feels like a very unoriginal thing. But at the same time, I can see why a lot of people would gravitate towards this because it's at a much more affordable and approachable price point. Not that you're ever gonna think that is going to be the case with a Leica M mount lens, but in this case it is. And I think this lens is obviously going to be very popular as it seems like it already is. Now, the thing about using this lens with a camera like the M10 is that you get a modern digital camera with a full frame sensor, high ISO performance, all that kind of stuff. And then you slap a lens on like this that is actually brand new technically, and you have the most inconspicuous package out there. So obviously it is incredibly minimal and very, very low profile. It weighs next to nothing. And I wouldn't say it's like a lens cap style lens, but it's about as small as you can get in a lens. Now, a few of the things right off the bat that I, I do really like about it, despite the fact that it is, uh, again, a very, very uh, close, I'll say, <laughs> version uh, to another Leica lens. I mean, I like the styling. I wish that they might not have used like the same font and everything too, as the Leica camera Wetzlar made in Germany style here. And then where it says TT Artisan and then these 28 millimeters are very, very similar. I'm assuming they're using the same typeface and you can sort of be the judge on whether it is worth it for you to pick up or not. So in terms of styling and everything, obviously it, it looks amazing on the camera. One of the things that I don't know if the original Leica version has this or not, but the lens mount where it shows kind of like your distance markings and stuff is like a shiny, shiny finish. And I, I don't know if they can show this off well enough. Yeah. Like right there, you can tell, I don't really know what the deal is with that. And I, if I was making this lens, maybe they're trying to make it like the old ones or something, but I would think that you wouldn't want something reflective um, on a camera like this. And so, you know, personally, I would definitely prefer it to all be the same kind of finish and material and stuff. So maybe they're trying to go after the original look. I'm not sure what the original one looked like, but you know, it is what it is, I guess. Uh, and that's again, my personal preference. Uh, another personal preference, I would have loved to, to see this lens in black as something that would be even more kind of inconspicuous. Uh, I think Leica actually made a black version at one point, like a special edition, but oh well. If they don't make a black one, who cares? It still looks good. One of the other things that's cool about this lens is it has an infinity lock. So to kind of like engage and disengage, it goes in there, you push this little tab down and then you can move it. Uh, it has a hard stop at what I believe is one meter. Yep. And then it goes in and you can see that it kind of has like a little thing right there where the tab goes into locks at infinity and just makes that whole process a lot simpler to just know when you're at infinity and then you can kind of learn here's one meter here's infinity now one of the things that's a little bit of a bummer about this is at 28 millimeters it's pretty wide and then the minimum focus distance is one meter but i think that for a lot of people myself included I'm sticking this lens at F8 or like F11 and just kind of zone focusing anyway. So you're going to be able to get closer than a meter. A meter is just going to be the center of focus at that point. So, you know, as it, as it kind of goes, you have a little bit of leeway um, one way or the other, which also would have been nice if they would have calculated out the markings on the bottom side right here. So let's say you're photographing at F11 you can see that F11 takes focus all the way down to here, but then there's no markings to tell you exactly how close you would be, which would be really, really helpful, I feel like. And again, I don't know if that in particular is something 
that the original version had or not, but regardless, it's just like a quality of life kind of thing that would be much easier if we had more markings along here to let me know what was and wasn't in focus. I'll leave a lot of the lens kind of performance things for my full review and I'll actually be also comparing it to my 28 millimeter Summicron, which probably not will necessarily be a, a fair comparison, but at least it'll give us kind of a baseline. And then um, I'm also planning on photographing this with my Leica M6. So I think that a lens like this is obviously going to shine a little bit more on film as well. So to give it kind of a fair shake, I feel like I need to make sure that I photograph this on film as well. But overall, the focus and everything feels really great. There's enough resistance, but not too little at times. I feel like it's actually just about where I would want it. The interesting thing is right now, technically I can't focus to the camera right now because uh, I'd have to get back to here. This is one meter to where I'm, I'm photographing this from. So even that's a little bit far, but I feel like for a travel lens, like street photography, that kind of thing, you know, walking around with this camera, photographing, you know, Paris or something like that would just fit the bill really, really well. So if you are interested in the full review of this or you have any specific questions, please drop them in the comments below. I'll make sure to get to them. And anything that you have, yeah, questions about, I will try to address as I can. I know that this is a very popular lens right now. They are really selling a ton of these and having a hard time getting them out to people. So now that I have one in my hands, I'd be more than happy to answer anything that you might have. And of course, I would love to get my hands on a copy of the actual Leica Sumeron version. So if anybody has some connection to that, that would be great. But I feel like at the price point, while this is kind of like a specific lens that isn't going to necessarily be for everyone or anything, I, I feel like it's something that at the price point, again, I would feel comfortable putting in my bag and spending the money on, even though I have something like the Summicron, just because it's something different that I'm assuming is gonna give me a much different rendering. And just the overall look and vibe of this thing is pretty special looking. So thanks so much for watching. If you are new to the channel, I do a ton of Leica reviews and gear videos and things like that. So subscribe if you aren't already. Leave a comment below if you have any questions about this and I will see you all on the next one.